This is Lifestyle Magazine with your hosts, Dr. Sharmini Long and Mike Tucker. Lifestyle Magazine is on the road. We're coming to you today from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. I'm joined by my co-host, Dr. Sharmini Long, who was born and raised in British Columbia. That's right. So an, a native Canadian right here. That's right. And we're also joined by Sergio and Sandra Amaral. Did I say that correctly? Yes. Well, that's, I'm really proud of myself now. I'm impressed. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us how the two of you met. Well, we met back in Brazil in 1985. 85. Yeah, that church that we used to go mm -hmm. there, and um, uh, I didn't like her first time I saw her. <laughs> you didn't like her? No, I didn't. No. She it was, was not love at first no, sight. No, she huh? was nope. too bossy. <laughs> <laughs> she was trying to control everything with uh, the, that group that was there. And, uh, I see. No, I was just following orders, okay? Following orders, <laughs> yeah. she said. So oh. I didn't like, so then I left. Uh huh. So uh, sometime after, I went for a youth camping. Uh -huh. And I saw this beautiful lady there, and I wasn't totally different than one that I saw at church, and mm -hmm. uh, I fell in love. Yeah, you fell in love, and then you found, found out you fell in love with the bossy lady. Yes. Exactly, <laughs> yes. Now, now that you fell in love and you've married her, is she still bossy? Yes. <laughs> Sandra, okay, it's your turn. You can have the uh, the counterbalance of this. Side of the story. So, what's your side of the story? <laughs> My side of the story. I just saw him in the church after the camping, after everything. I didn't know. I never that day, the bossy day. I didn't see him there. I uh. didn't pay attention. So, but then I saw that kind of quiet, which is not quiet, but he was quiet. Uh huh. Made mm, nice guy, very looking guy. So, mm. so you were drawn to him, huh? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. Now you've got children. Yes. Two, two children. Is that right? Two boys. Two boys. Gabriel is twenty-nine and Thiago twenty-one years old. Now the younger son had a had an issue. Is that correct, or is no. it Gabriel? The oldest. The older son yes. has had an issue. Yes. Tell me what happened to Gabriel. Well, uh, ten years ago was a Sunday night. I was studying, and Gabriel, I heard something downstairs. I thought it was the dog. Mm -hmm. And I went downstairs and it was Gabriel. He was kind of vomiting and mm. not saying things like, uh, so I called Sergio and he wasn't responding, so we called 911. And uh, at the end of the night, they found out that he was uh, having a brain hemorrhage. A hemorrhage. And uh, was rushed to the hospital in Toronto. Uh, we live like one hour from Toronto. Mm. And um, they said they start, start to talk about organ donation because it has wow. to be in a life support machine for a month. He was almost a month in um, induced coma and uh, they said he will not survive. But thanks God. Uh, that night we um, had a pastor, Pastor Robert Putt, uh, with us and um, he anointed him and we said it's up to God now. And uh, we never made any decisions, and ten years passed, and he's alive. Oh, but yeah, but so he was perfectly but, healthy. Perfectly, and this, then all of a sudden, this all of a sudden, as this happened, uh, two percent of the population has. It's called AVM, artery vein malformation. You probably know what is this. Mm -hmm. um, less than one percent survived, and wow. Gabriel survived, and it was his was is it can be anywhere heart, leg, finger, his was in the brain stem. So it's a place that you cannot go there and take it out because that is all different kinds of procedures to right. fix the, the, the vein. But in his case, um, it wasn't. So two years after the, the hemorrhage, he started treatment with gamma knife surgery and took four years for the treatment worked. And fortunately, uh, his doesn't have any more the AVM because he could have another hemorrhage like one after another. Is he is he able to function normally or is there some diminished capacity for him? Physically. Physically, Physically. there's diminished yeah. capacity? It's like a, a stroke so his left because was on the right side so his left side of his lower body is paralyzed and his face is on the right side because mm -hmm. it affected his, the, the facial nerve. Mm -hmm. So he's lost his right hearing side. He uh -huh. lost partial vision. Uh, he's considered legally blind. Um, he uh, mentally perfect, but he has 
diminished physical capacities. So now. when this happened, you were the one that found him. Yes. And what were you? What were your thoughts when you went downstairs and and saw that something wasn't wasn't right? I at the beginning, like I couldn't connect because he was vomiting. Actually, he wasn't off vomit. We saw that after when yeah, after Sergio had, carried yeah. him, and then he wasn't like walking or standing. Then I saw it. So the 911 helped us to. Um, give it the, the directions what to do, put it on your, his side, and then right. that's we saw the, 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 the vomit. So, so when, you got some help then? Yes, yeah. through the phone, and then the firefighter came, they're the first one who came, so they're the one who start to, uh, the first, um, how you call it, first street, first aid, or? Yeah, the first responders there were, yeah, were taking care of him. Yeah, because he wasn't breathing. Make sure that he, he could breathe, breathing. so it did the, the resuscitation. Yeah. So the damage is because the, the blood, the blood yeah. brain doesn't like blood. Yeah. So where the blood touched, yeah. that's where yeah, that's he where got damaged. damaged there, yeah. And so, Jill, you've got to be kind of going a little bit crazy, too, with all this, looking at your son mm -hmm. and um, feeling kind of helpless. Is that a good description? Yes, we are very attached, right? So we always playing together and do all yeah. kind of stuff, father and son. And uh, so when that happened, uh, I was very stressed. So I would imagine. Yeah. I want to talk more about the effects upon the two of you and your family when we come back. But we need to take a break right now. We will be right back after this. I'm Mike Lindell, and as you know, my passion is to help each and every one of you get the best sleep of your life. That's why I created my new Giza Dreams bed sheets. I started by using the world's best cotton called Giza. It's only grown in a region between the Sahara Desert, the Mediterranean Sea, and the Nile River. It's ultra soft and breathable, but extremely durable. I guarantee you they'll be the most comfortable sheets you'll ever own. I do not like my sheets. I love my Giza Dream Sheets. Call or go to MyPillow.com right now to take advantage of Mike's limited time offer. Use the promo code on the screen, and when you buy one set of Giza Dream Sheets, Mike will send you another set absolutely free. That's right, buy one set of Giza Dream Sheets and get another set absolutely free. Choose from a variety of colors in solids, stripes, and new flannel sheets. Order now. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. We're talking with Sergio and Sandra about their son. Now, Sergio, back in Brazil, you were a nurse and a policeman. Yes. You've had a lot of training. Yes. And yet, when it was your own son, how did that affect you? Did, did your training kick in, or were you kind of losing it? No, I couldn't do anything. <laughs> no, because uh, you don't know how to act. Yeah. Because you, you love that person so much and yes. you don't want to lose him. And then everything you know, you just. Goes out the window. Can, you can use it. Yeah. yeah. Goes out the window. The emotions are just too strong. Mm -hmm. It's too strong. And uh, I was so scary. I don't know if he was going to die. I, I didn't yeah. know what's happening to him. Yeah. And uh, I was talking to the 911 through the phone and uh, I was just screaming. Yeah. I even didn't, didn't understand what they said to me. You what just, I had to do it. So Sandra took the phone and I started to tell me what to do. Yeah. yeah. You were almost hysterical at that point. I was hysterical, yes. Now, as a policeman and a nurse, you've been through a lot of bad situations before yes. and handled those well as a professional. Yes. This is different when it's your boy, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Like Absolutely. I said, it's, it's, if, when it's somebody else, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's not easier. that easy, but, no, but you can do if it. you're more comfortable. The emotions yes. are so overwhelming, I would yes. think that it's hard to even comprehend or function yeah. in exactly. situations like that. How long was he in a coma for? <clears throat> he was for induced coma three weeks and then they decided to take him out of the coma so it was that night was hard it was we did a, a visual we all we had I think 12 pastors with that because we we're very friend with all the church then uh, he was in sub coma for six months so he started to coming out of the coma slowly so it wasn't like a certain day mm -hmm. he just Wake, no. wake up one day. And no, then. so was it slowly. So 
we deal with him in the, in the room, uh, by the way, 27, 24 seven yeah. with him. He never, never, we never let him alone. Someone was with him at all times. All the time, because we thought, I don't know if he, was, he could hear, if he could understand. Mm -hmm. You know, those kind of movies that the person is yeah. locked inside, that's the way he was, because now he remembers certain things, flashback. Yeah. He doesn't remember all the six months. Yeah. Good. Yeah, but, that's, that's uh, a good thing. I, we, we're treating him like um, he was listening. So movies, music, talking, mm -hmm. pictures, reading. Mm -hmm. um, my, my parents and his parents came and then reading Portuguese and we have a friend that I was reading in English. Uh, we learn everything as much as we could to help the nurses mm -hmm. because one day he could be alone and then. So I don't like hospital. I don't think anybody <laughs> likes hospital, <laughs> but I learned. I learned how to do suction and I learned, we learned how to do physio with him, of course. to move him with the lift to the wheelchair. Yeah. Doing something physical though kind of took your mind off the emotions, exactly. didn't it? I, I, it helped I you cope. Try, I try to, I, I'm this kind of person, he's different. So I try to, okay, this is the problem. What can I do for solutions? So what can I help? What not just so nobody were allowed to um, cry. So I never cried inside the, the room. Is that right? Yeah. I was very, everybody, so I ask everybody, don't cry because Always be positive. she doesn't know. Exactly. Yeah. So I have a, a Helen Keller's um, um, sentence and, and thoughts, and I had uh, all kind of pictures that he used to do because he used to be a... Uh, um, a snowboard, a skateboard, a yeah. a water skier, a soccer player. So I put you got everything. These pictures up and around. Yeah. yeah, movies that he liked because I didn't know how much he was understand. Yeah. But then, if I have to cry, then I leave the room, go outside, and. Right, and this, I, this is such a mother's heart. I, just, I mean, this is a mom. <laughs> this is a mom talking right here. There's, there's no two ways about that's this. That's a lot of strength to hold it together. That's a lot of strength to hold this together and to put together a plan. I mean, this is such a plan of positivity. Oh, My son will live. Yeah, we have a schedule. When he did start waking up, did you have to talk to him about what had happened? I was in a hospital one Saturday afternoon with friends. Yeah. And uh, I asked Gabriel, if he was understanding something and if he, he understood just to mm -hmm. do something and uh, I asked him to move his eyebrow yeah. and he did it. Yeah. So I asked a second, third time and then he responded yeah. this way. So I called Sandra and said, uh, I'm asking some questions to Gabriel and he's answering, moving his eye eyebrow. Yeah. And I put the phone in his ear and uh, Sandra was asking questions to Gabriel and he was moving his eyebrow, he probably. was responding, so yeah. she just rushed to the hospital and uh, yeah. it was the first time when they saw some answers. So you finally got hope. Yes. yes. You've got hope, my son's yes. going to live. Because they said, oh, he survived. Remember that they yeah. said about organ donation, disconnect yeah. the machine. Now he's not in the machine anymore. He has tracheostomy, he has feeding mm -hmm. tube. But they said, oh, he'll be like that forever. So now he's responding, I said, okay, uh, vegetables don't respond. The vegetable yeah. cannot answer, so he's responding. He's, so. he's something more than a vegetable yes. at this point. So you've got hope. Yes. But he must have been confused because one day he was perfectly fine, and all of a sudden things he changed. He couldn't. He couldn't uh, tell us what was going on. So from the day one, after they said first, they said you could talk to him. Then they said no, don't talk to him because the brain mm -hmm. can, was uh, swelling. Too so much, yeah. after he passed this uh, phase, then they said talk to him. Talk to him. So I use I was a teacher in Brazil, so I, I use all kind of stimulation that you use with a child in the kindergarten. Mm -hmm. So and then I start to talk to him, and then we from the day one that he went back to Oshawa, um, we start to talk to him like if he was understanding. So he remembers now that when he remembers the flashbacks, he says that he was calm because we always say, don't worry, you're in the hospital, but we're with you, we're yeah. with you. So we are okay. with you, don't worry, you will ne we will never leave you alone. So then he wasn't like, the only thing it was shocking him when he went to another hospital for um, rehab, they call physio, mm -hmm. and then that when Serge explained to him what's happened, then really, he, shocked, yeah, then he was like, 
because he thought maybe I failed, maybe yeah. he didn't know what exactly mm -hmm. happened with him. That's incredible. The, the, the story is intriguing right now. The, the parents' love is just overwhelming, this story. And I, I, I want to honor that before we take this break. Uh, you guys never gave up. Yeah. And that's, that's, a, that's a major part of this story. Sergio never gave up, but you never gave up either. Yeah. And so we're going to take a break on that note. We'll be right back with more after this. Healers from God, a devotional filled with practical yet inspirational teachings and real life experiences with real word application, which will encourage the reader. Order your copy today at Amazon.com or MotivatedByLove.org. Scripture therapy offers solutions to challenges individuals face every day. Scripture therapy combines faith, psychology, and life experiences to reach those seeking more in their daily walk with God. The authors, Lester and Roxanne Trichet, have blended their skills to produce a powerful book that has the potential of helping people from all kinds of backgrounds and systems of belief. The Trichets are a dynamic duo is a must read for anyone who wants to enhance their spirituality and improve their happiness quotient on day one. Available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, iTunes, and www.scripturetherapycenter.com. We've been listening to an incredible story with Sandra and Sergio about your son. So we've, we've talked about your positivity and about your faith and your intense love for your son. You would never give up. But there are some down times with all this too. I mean, this, emotionally, after the months, this is taking a, a, a drain on you. Is it impacting your marriage? Are you, is it hurting you during this time? Tell me about that. What, what, what were the impacts on your marriage? Uh, one day, Pastor Robert Pat, he told the first night that um, what happened to Gabriel could make our marriage survive or, or finish there. Yeah, that's true. So it's our choice to, to be together. Or, mm -hmm. So we decided to, to be together and help Gabriel. Mm -hmm. well, there was a lot of stuff happening, right? And uh, yeah. a lot of emotions, ups and downs. Of course, uh, our relationship was deteriorated sometimes and yeah. uh, little fights here and there disagreements and, uh, and we have to work with that stuff right sometimes I want to do my way she wants to do her way of course and uh, by the end we had to sit and talk together what's the best for Gabriel not for us and so doing that help us too right, right. To keep together yeah yeah but you found a way to, to, to persevere yes. you're still together after all this time yes. how did how did this affect your younger son well Gabriel and Thiago, they are very close that time, right? So they are 80 years apart. So Gabriel was the older brother and always mm -hmm. helping. And, uh, and then after, uh, Thiago has to get more mature and to understand yeah. what happened to Gabriel, right? And uh, he started helping us more and more. So right now he's 21 years old and uh, he helps Gabriel a lot. He goes out, bringing Gabriel for physiotherapy, swimming pool, all this stuff. And uh, he has to work, he has to study, and have to have time for his brother. Yeah. But uh, Gabriel is what Gabriel is not what Tiago is now, yeah. right? Gabriel is supposed to be married now, yeah. to have his own kids, mm -hmm. and now Tiago is is everything what he's never gonna be. Yeah. And uh, sometimes there's a little conflict, not between them, but we can see it on Gabriel, right? And Gabriel, yeah. Yes. Knowing, knowing he'll never do that. Never do that. So. Those and were this, part of his dreams before. Exactly, and this affects Tiago, and yeah. sometimes affects a little bit their relationship. Yeah. But thanks God, they they talk a lot, they fight, but at the end of the day, they... They're brothers. They're, they're brothers, brothers. They're, they're supposed yeah. to fight. Exactly. At <laughs> the end of the day, they talk and they solve all the problems. And the, yeah. But not on that, only that, but we had a lot of help, too. Yeah. Um, counseling. Mm -hmm. I believe in counseling. Mm -hmm. uh, for guys, it's hard. Yeah, it is hard. Harder to but open up. But I practically, we practically has to bring him to the counseling, <laughs> um, depression, mm -hmm. 
not only Gabriel's depression because he has depression, of but course. us too. I react in some way, he reacts in another way. I didn't know I had depression until mm -hmm. I lost 10 kilos. Uh, he didn't know that he had depression until he started to have diabetes, other things. Yeah. So then everything related to what we went through. Tiago went through the counseling because he could understand why this happened. Mm -hmm. So the why is why. So yeah. And there are no good answers for the no, why question. No. Right There's never now, a good answer no. for it. That, that's what we're trying yeah. to explain to them. That is no yeah. answer. Yeah, you, you can't find that. But um, the, you talked about the depression. Basically, you're also, along with Gabriel, suffering a loss. Yes. Gabriel's loss, as you mentioned earlier, yes. he knows he's not going to get married. He's not going to do the things he sees his brother starting to do now. Yes. He, that's a loss for him because his hopes and dreams that, uh, that he had for his future yes. are gone. Now, he's, he's not wa doing the, the snowboarding anymore. He's not uh, doing those things, and that's a, a loss that he's grieving. Yeah. That leaves him depressed as well. Mm -hmm. yes. But you grieve the same things for him, don't you? Yes. And even though we have like a, a universal health care in Canada, yes. everything is paid by the government, yeah. and, uh, it's affect our finances. Of course. Life. Yes. Because those Very things are yeah. not covered by the government, a so you have to not. pay. Yeah. So, yeah. It's hard, so you have to get the balance, but it's still uh, uh, things to grow. Like right now, Gabriel is going back to school. Mm -hmm. um, those kind of things that that is helping him to make him more useful, more busy, more not independent, more independent, mm -hmm. and he likes that. He of and course. we we do everything we can do in order to let him go independently, but. Uh, is a process. Like, I don't know when, um, if we will reach that point that everybody will be content. Mm -hmm. Well, he's, he has surprised you thus far, hasn't he? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who knows what this he young man is capable he of? Has, he says that he has a mother and a father that push him, push him a lot, <laughs> yeah. so we, don't give, we yeah. don't give up on no, him. No mercy. No uh, mercy. No mercy. <laughs> no mercy. <laughs> and never let him give up. Yeah. yeah. No. Not yes. So what keeps you going? Our faith, yes. our trust in God and uh, the church support, friends, friends family. family. Mm -hmm. This is, it is, is involve everybody. Yeah. Uh, Has uh, it made the two of you closer? Yes. yes. Uh, yeah, you talked about the struggles, but ultimately you've made a decision, haven't you? That's, a kind, that's exactly what we have to make a decision. When Pastor Pat sat down with us and said, this will help you to get more closer or will separate that we made a decision yeah. because it's not only about, it wasn't only about us, it was about him too. Yeah. So how can we help him being apart? Yeah. I don't believe that um, this, this uh, happened because God wants. No, God doesn't no. want that. But he works in the mysterious ways yeah. and uh, with Gabriel's situation, we grew in so many areas. Sounds like everybody in the family, when you were at a point of helplessness, made a decision. You made a choice because you still had one. Yes. We'll talk about that in a moment when we come back. We got one more word right after this. The Faith Unveiled Network was birthed out of a need to give exposure to unknown or hidden people that possess God's gifts and talents. There are preachers, teachers, musicians, clothing designers, artists, cooks, and many others that God has given extraordinary talents to. God is raising up these people in His kingdom that will glorify Him. Our goal is to bring these talents to your mobile devices, computers in your home and office, or on the go. With today's technology, these gifts and talents can be shared with you 24-7. Broadcasters that will bless your heart and your life. Currently, the Faith Unveiled Network shares these talents in the form of video and podcasting services. As the network grows, it will strive to move into other medias such as cable TV, satellite TV, and local TV. The goal is to enhance the experience of the network's TV shows through networking resources and communication activities that become available. The ultimate goal of the network is to build and bring unity to the Kingdom of God through its broadcasters via the internet, social media, mobile apps, and other available resources. 
by facilitating the use of the gifts of the Spirit, according to 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 11, on a global level, each broadcaster brings their own gifts and treasured talents. Enjoy each moment, each broadcaster's TV show, and let them and us hear from you. We'd love to know that you're watching their programs and being blessed by their God-given gifts. Thank you for watching FUN, the Faith Unveiled Network. Thank you for watching FUN, the Faith Unveiled Network. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and as you know, my passion is to help each and every one of you get the best sleep of your life. That's why I created my new Giza Dreams bed sheets. I started by using the world's best cotton called Giza. It's only grown in a region between the Sahara Desert, the Mediterranean Sea, and the Nile River. It's ultra soft and breathable, but extremely durable. I guarantee you they'll be the most comfortable sheets you'll ever own. I do not like my sheets. I love my Giza Dream sheets. Call or go to MyPillow.com right now to take advantage of Mike's limited time offer. Use the promo code on the screen, and when you buy one set of Giza Dream Sheets, Mike will send you another set absolutely free. That's right, buy one set of Giza Dream Sheets and get another set absolutely free. Choose from a variety of colors in solid stripes and new flannel sheets. Order now. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. Sandra and Sergio have been sharing this story with us, and right now I'd like to have each of you share just a little bit more of your heart. Sergio, what, what would you like to say in closing? Well, I tried to do a deal with God before, yeah. for Him to take my life and gave it to Gabriel, yeah. but since it didn't happen, so I'm trying to be strong and uh, wait till that day He's going to explain everything to me. You want to know why? Why this happened. Yeah. You want to know why? Yeah, I want to be there for that. All right. Sandra? I'm trying to learn and work with in a positive way with the negative ways and i know always somebody will be suffering more than me and need more things than me or than gabriel so he's alive work with that mm. both of you have made choices uh, even though you don't know the reason why you're determined to wait and find out later and trust right now and you've decided to turn the negative into positive Thank you for making those choices and for sharing them with us. And thank you for sharing your story. And thank you for being a part of this one as well. We look forward to seeing you every time we're on the air, and we're so glad you were here today. We look forward to seeing you next time. But until then, you take care of yourself. Bye-bye. To get a copy of today's offer, please call 888-940-0062. You may write us at Lifestyle Magazine, P.O. Box 7729, Riverside, California, 92513. And be sure to visit our website at lifestyle.org.